Epstein was really the bottom bitch in the entire fucking thing. Elaine Maxwell was CIA. Every CIA. Just a facade agent and a CIA agent the entire fucking time. Save the children. children. He drives the UFO. Save the children. <laughs> Episode six. I'm Frank. Caleb. Riley. Noel. We're back. We're here to give you some intellectually um, stimulating conversation. We were just talking about Daniel Radcliffe he... being Wolverine, which I think is a good idea. <laughs> no one else here is with me on that, but I think it's pretty cool. I was with you with Tom Hardy aesthetically looking the part. Yeah, but he's a he's, he's not, not a good actor. actor. Yeah. I love Tom Hardy, but he's not the best. Yeah, you know, he's not you winning know? any Oscars anytime soon. Yeah. But... That's okay. I he, like I said, he aesthetically looks the part. But, but you're right, Daniel Radcliffe would kill it acting. Well, there's not that many actors. You gotta have someone who's... You gotta have a really short Wolverine at some no, point. No, that's fine. He would fit it also... Wolverine's supposed to be like 5'2". Just... He doesn't have his war face. I don't know. Yeah. He looks very boyish. I don't know. Wolverine looks like a... You gotta a, do a Lord of the Rings style Wolverine. where he looks like super small compared to everyone else. They just like, could, you, weird. could you see Elijah Wood as Wolverine? <laughs> No. Then why do you see Daniel Radcliffe as Wolverine? Because Daniel Radcliffe can be mean. He was mean that fucking neo-Nazi Imperium. movie. Imperium. Yeah, he was buff, too. He can handle it. I don't know. You can do that for the Nazis. You can do it for the X-Men. I feel like... <laughs> the thing with Elijah Wood is he could pull off if just his voice doesn't work. Daniel yeah. Radcliffe can at least do That's like a, he has a, a... He could probably do like a somewhat decent voice. like Canadian wilderness accent. His accent's so thick, though. Even when he does try and do like normal accents, there's a small slip of. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, okay. he won't be Wolverine ever. It's no, gonna I know. be some giant man. I know. Well, I, I see. I, see I got ideas. Man. It was hilarious. That was a good, you know. Yeah, it was a good fuck cast. You. All right. Well, what are we talking about before? Children of a. Children of a alien. Well, aliens is the broad. Children of aliens. Aliens of children. Yeah. <laughs> children well, of Fatima. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know anything about the. Hold so. On. What? It's called what, what now? Children of uh, the children of Fatima, or Fatima, that Fatima. or Fatima. That's what I said. Whatever you want to call it. Um, but base. Well, we were talking about aliens, and I was gonna get into, how, I guess, how that could coincide with like alien well, and UFO is. stuff. So where? But basically, okay. It? So this is what the the story is. Um, it's like nineteen fifteen. You had it pulled up. You have it pulled up? Not the Fatima one, but... Which which one of you motherfuckers have <laughs> the Wikipedia page pulled up? I got the aliens ready to go. All right, the so... Miracle of Fatima. Also known right, so as Miracle 1917. of the um, I think in, like, a few days prior from the, the big event happening, um, there were three children who were all... Um, they're all siblings, I think, right? Did it say? Something like that. Pretty sure they're siblings. Um, basically, they were visited by this being, quote unquote, some entity, um, who they claimed was the Virgin Mary, and um, basically she, uh, I think she said like to gather everyone together, like in the town, thousands of people, um, on this one day, and like I think it was in like noon or like eleven a.m., and like to look in the sky, and you'll like see, she'll show up, basically. Where was this? It's in, uh, not Mexico, somewhere in South America. South America? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so this entity came down and spoke? And yeah, it was a like, woman, apparently. A woman? And um, she, I don't know if she claimed to be the Virgin Mary or if they thought she was the Virgin Mary. They saw Just her put that as shit the, on her? Yeah. Um, Probably, honestly. But basically, all the people gathered. There's pictures of, like, everyone there. Yeah. And, like pictures of the sky but nothing everything's normal in the picture but basically all the townspeople gathered around and they looked up into the sky and they there's thousands of like reports some people say they saw nothing but there's like hundreds and hundreds of reports of different like things that people saw in the sky like some say like the sky turned black there were crazy colors they were saying one of the biggest things they were saying the sun was moving a giant like shiny round object was moving around in the sky whoa 
like doing crazy maneuvers and there was like crazy balls of light orbs oh, and, wow. like going through the air like insane colors just a whole light show going on yeah and um what, around what time was this i think it was like around noon know. pretty sure what, what era of time i was this? i know this is 1917 oh shit yeah 100 years ago <clears throat> pretty much um i i think the story goes that the entity quote unquote had had told the three kids like at like different points of of their lives when to reveal certain information that she gave them Jesus. and when you look it up on i think it comes up so it says that she confided so it says uh lucia's testimony lucia is the girl who first um one of the three i think she was, was the, actually the oldest cousins, one by the way oh they're cousins, oh, they're cousins. Okay, um but either way she describes seeing a lady brighter than the sun, so I think that's also what the rays you were talking about. I think it was actually coming from the lady. Mm -hmm. um, Seems like the human torch, just emitting light. Emitting Whoa. light, light <laughs> clear. fire in the sky. <laughs> it says light clearer and stronger than crystal glass filled with the most sparkling water and pierced by the most burning of rays of the sun. And that's oh, her word for word. Up. That's oddly poetic. But um, the lady apparently... Confided in the children three secrets known as the three secrets of Fatima. Um, so basically, I read through here, she made the children or she told the children to like starve themselves, to tighten these ropes around their waist to cause themselves pain. Um, they said that war was due to sin and that God would further punish the population due to it. And this it sounds was like during, a time traveling uh, sadist. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like what now? It's an interesting idea. A time actually. traveling sadist. Well, wouldn't that be sadist? fucked up? That would be fucked up. I mean, that's that's person? the way to that's the oh, move. sadistic person. You know, go to a, just era. Well, it's it's kind of I guess it's kind of easy to just assume that all the insane, like unbelievable shit that has been caused by evil entities, quote unquote, is just a, some time traveling asshole. Some time traveling well, asshole. Yeah. Well, where that's does what the asshole? Are. Get yeah, basically, or the interdimensional assholes. asshole. <laughs> where does the asshole come from? You know, there's got to be suck. someone that pissed the first guy off. And who started it? Who was that first guy that was angry, you know? Or is that just, you think that's just natural? Eh, no, It's I mean, definitely natural. If you go far enough in the future, I mean, if you think of it in really weird, like, sci-fi terms, like... It just becomes fantasy. Yeah, I could see just, that. They're just, castles oh, just going to go fuck Some off asshole guy, and he gets, he just, some genius. Just yeah. tie these things around their waist, and... Yeah, no, but, um... It was during World War One, <laughs> clearly, and um, yeah, well, she explained there was a punishment for sin. The only like the, that's hardcore. It's just kind of a wacky story, but the significance, I guess, is that it's like one of the only proven miracles from the Catholic Church. I don't know what's proven about this miracle. <laughs> um, all the I guess it's like all the eyewitnesses. I guess so. That's fair enough. I don't know what the Catholic Church had to do with that. Oh, you know, I know they, why. It was a, it's a, the Virgin Mary. I know why, yeah. It says, The Virgin Mary, in all her appearances at Fatima, the Blessed Mother repeatedly emphasized the necessity of praying to Rosary daily, which is a special prayer they do for the Virgin Mary. Um, Catholics are required to pray to Mary, as opposed to, like, where Christians have a direct uh, relationship with God. They can pray themselves. These people have to pray to Mary, and then they also have to um, confess their sins. And I think that this was a way of the Catholic Church marking something the public recognized as a like popular pop culture thing and saying, this is why you have to obey like this religion. This is why hmm. you have to pray to Mary and confess your sins. That's pretty crazy, actually. And it, it's actually kind of interesting how most, um, the entire mythos of aliens and uh, kind of stems almost, like a lot of it stems from religion, or at least religion has a kind of hand-in-hand -hand play going along with it. You can see it in paintings, just in you know, biblical descriptions or even ancient descriptions, but it's kind of weird that it all kind of seems like angels and spirits up until World War II. And then once the bombs dropped, it became much more of a technological kind of phenomena with craft we're seeing, physical things that are, you know, propelled, uh, instruments being used. It just becomes a weird kind of, it the story completely changes, you know what I mean? Of course, you still get the occasional spirits that perhaps, or maybe that's what it is. But at the same time, it does become a different phenomenon once the zeitgeist changes. It's a little fucking weird because, like you were saying, 1917, World War One, 
was going on then? You know, you're seeing the Virgin Mary. What happens in Roswell during World War II? Fucking the day of, actually, Roswell, they said that uh, they, being the U.S. military in New Mexico, I, I, I just I see your face. Interested so, or found something very Is this interesting Fatima? that you'll find. If it's a also Fatima, say it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, but, but no, keep, no, we'll keep finishing. Uh, what what, what I was about sorry, to say I'm was sorry. that no, uh, the day of Roswell, when the initial crash happened, they literally, they being the uh, first off, the U.S. military reported to the journalists of the time in 1947, 45. I don't know exactly when Roswell happened. Might have been 52. In that area. <laughs> early, yeah, early 50s. Right? Uh, 52, yeah. Uh, they said day of that they recovered crashed broken flying saucer and two bodies the next day not even 24 hours later they said never mind it was a we retract the statement that was false it was weather balloons okay so roswell 1952 that was one of the first sightings of ufos in general that was one of the first times it's ever been on record in the u.s government like where there's files of us talking about it but yeah, like it was covered up. Yeah, there was the Battle of L.A. kind of thing, but that was, I don't know, that feels to me more like a misnomer than anything. Something happened, but mm-hmm. I don't know if there was a UFO. So what I read is that there was a bunch of UFOs flying over the United States, and many people were recounting them. And basically, you know, we just didn't have the coverage or anything at that point, and, you know, the government mm-hmm. just... I think once it. they realized what it was, that's when a lot of the secrecy happened. Initially, the secrecy could start just because we don't know what they are, and so you don't want to panic people. But understandable. But it seems to be a, a a continued effort to keep these things in secrecy. It, it, perhaps maybe because we aren't ready to know the goddamn truth. While we're looking yeah. for truth here, um, let's let's seek some truth in this biblical story. Yeah, but what were you saying about the uh, okay? So basically, the three secrets that they came out with and. I guess, I don't Secrets know, do you, guys, is. do you guys feel like there's any kind of alien connection with this at all? Because so, yeah, I, I, mean, I heard someone talk about it once, that uh, Jeremy Corbell guy, yeah. and I, I guess just how unexplainable mm-hmm. stuff is, but I don't know. A lot of um, it is. He was tying into that, but this is, um, here, let's see. Um, the secret consists of uh, three parts, so there's this... Um, Basically, the heart of Our Lady's message to the world is contained in what has come to be called the secret. So the secret consists of three parts, the first two of which have been publicly revealed. The third one has not. Um, The first part of the secret was a horrifying vision of hell, in quotes, where the souls of poor sinners go and contain an urgent plea from Our Lady for acts of prayer and sacrifice to save souls. It's fucking dark. What if religion was just aliens that uh, feed off suffering, and so they create all these rules? Now you're getting in like a halo, like a weird halo, fucking doom. uh, The elites. No, I'm I'm with that. I'm with that, but I want to hear the rest of the I get to that. Sure. Um, The second part of the secret specifically prophesies the outbreak of World War II and contained the mother of God's solemn request for the consecration of Russia as a condition for world peace. I mean, I could anybody could have called World War II okay. happening after they blamed everything on Germany. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know well, that... well, it's all Germany's fault. Germany is an evil nation. Yeah, but so like <laughs> all about, of it. You're just talking about evil, right? And then we're also talking about aliens and the entities, well, spacecrafts. Okay, I know I'm getting real broad here, but as broad as it goes, let's just say these aliens could possibly be spirits from other realms, like many have mentioned in the past. You know. The religion, like Catholicism, does have heaven and hell, and maybe there could be other dimensional beings that do feed off of dark energy, such as souls being used for their labor or people dying and being sent to hell, being burned. Arcane energy, kind of like, you know, doom type stuff. (laughs) Um, That could be going on very well. I believe it could be going on. And due to that, um, when we're doing war, basically, like, Hitler change the frequency of the earth to an evil frequency supposedly you can look this up online there's a few things on this i will look up this as well and have more information on that on our next podcast but um supposedly like hitler totally was satanic so i could see why you know during wars it's like similar to the wonder woman movie you know he was into some uh he's really into like norse mythology and like a lot of weird occult shit 
Yeah, the Nazis like, had their really own occult, like an occult stuff. kind of division. Yeah. Um, sorry, you can go back. To but on a about. on a broader spectrum of all this, like just good and evil spirits from another place that are trying to get to here, trying to use us the best that they can. Um, so, the evil dimension, you know, they're trying to get onto Earth and dominate the Earth. That's kind of like what Hitler was doing, and in a way, Hitler embodied all of the evil like spirits and beliefs that most people have: Satanism, or if you believe in, you know, Catholicism whatever you believe in, the evil would be there, and then the good would be, like, these other aliens, these spirits that are coming to these children here and giving them the secrets, talking about repenting. Um, well, that's actually kind of weird. Uh, do, do you know of the aerial school? It's weird that how you say the spirits, the spirits, first off, and then how the, this miracle of Fatima, I'm not sure what it's called, but it, yeah. it was kind of, it gave, this entity gave these kids, people, visions, of things to come do you remember the aerial school um event a ufo sighting in 1995 it was this school in zimbabwe it was an international school i've heard about it, I don't yeah, know it the there was like a bunch of kids of there from like yeah. you know international there's some american some dutch german mm -hmm. and then the african kids there as well basically they during recess or lunch one of these recess like states uh all the teachers were having this little meeting and all the kids were outside playing Long story short, I guess a UFO lands, flying saucer, small dome, um, pretty typical, lands in this tree clearing about 50 yards away, 50, 60 yards away, very close. Some kids were super close, like 10 yards away, like they mm -hmm. could see into the eyes of eventually what would happen. <laughs> yes. So long story short, this craft came down. All the kids stopped playing and they all look at it because what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Uh, these two beings come out of the very top and come down. They notice the kids. They're wearing black, skin-tight fitted suits. They're looking at these at the kids, looking around. And the then Matrix they, style. Matrix style, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All the leather of the early 2000s. <laughs> and they're leave. looking at the kids. Then they go back to their craft, and they're doing something to the craft. All the kids are just staring at them. And some of the kids start moving closer to the craft to see what's going on. And once that happens, they the... These two beings stop dead in their tracks. They look at all the kids and they stare at them. And they, it, a lot of the kids said it felt like a trance. They were all falling into a trance, but only some of them. The ones directly in front of the craft were able to, were falling into this trance. And the ones on the kind of far peripherals were not affected as much, but they also couldn't see the craft. They could only see the beings. Mm -hmm. So these beings just appeared out of nowhere for them. Did they anyway, just, did they describe like what they yes. actually look like? So one of the beings was uh, short, small, had the dome heads with the la large black eyes. Who uh, gave this description? Yeah, one of those grays that you you know hear about, the very uh -huh. typical ones. But they were about their height, really short, which Bob Lazar has even talked about. This yeah. scientist of Area Fifty One. <laughs> the other was humanoid, blonde hair, long hair, beautiful looking. They said white skin, no eyebrows though. A kind of slightly longer face, very humanoid, just staring at them. And this being, nothing. they were communicating with the kids. The kids literally, because they were interviewed by a Harvard psychologist later. Uh, there's the video of it, the whole, it's like an hour long. Where is this one more time? Zimbabwe, Africa. Uh, so. What, what year is it? 95. 95. 95. That's why there's still uh, video. The kids grow have grown up and have talked about it recently. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, these entities in the sleek black suits are telepathically i know stay with me telepathically I'm, communicating I'm to oh, these yeah. children and the children who the one of the youngest in the uh interview who was like maybe 10 11 years old yeah she said that this alien was this entity was look this person she said was looking at her and it freaked her out and it scared her to her core but then she had visions and feelings that the earth that we we as a species are not treating the earth correctly to be weary of technology and to not abuse it and to take care of the earth and the trees she said specifically and she said hmm. and the psychologist was like have you ever had these feelings or thoughts before she's like no bitch i'm 10 no, I've never had these thoughts before. <laughs> That's what she, she said specifically. No, she she just said no. I've never. She just shook her head. I she was, see a ten year old. She was kind of frightened. No, bitch. <laughs> yeah, but no, um. That's fucking so, wild. So <laughs> uh, they're just staring at these kids, telepathically communicating, 
and then the kids start freaking the fuck out once they come to after about like two minutes of just a staring contest. They start freaking the fuck out. The entities run, literally run back to the ship, and they get into the top of the ship, and it goes down like a like a platform, and then they zoom off. But the kids all start freaking out, and they run away, and they run towards the teachers, and the teachers like, "What the hell happened? What's going on?" And they all say the same story, exact same. Oh. Some of them just describe them different, just how it looked sli- slightly differently, but pretty much the humanoid and the gray traveling together. And the humanoid was about normal adult human male like height but the what do you gray, think he was Different i think that there species? i think that what we are we mm. are not natural to this earth mm. maybe we came from the asteroid that the dinosaur that killed the dinosaurs but i know we are pretty parasitic and i know that we are not natural from this earth maybe we monkeys keep- where Homo sapien and any other bipedal hominid is so, so different from us. Oh, yeah. So here's another maybe, outlandish thought of where we could have come from. Maybe the, that's the normal humanoid. And, no, that's the original human and we're the humanoid. There's a stone in um, yes. Australia. I think they call it the Life Stone. Oh, God. And that you can like climb this area. It's this big mountain. But people believe that that stone was from another planet and it was actually like part of some form of their technology to like seed this planet. Yeah, and they dropped it here to seed this planet with new life, including us, mm-hmm. and it was apparently including like the Sasquatches. Yeah, and Bigfoot baby. In, in we're this, going deep. So there. in this same theory here, the Sasquatches are also like alien species. You believe in Sasquatch? They're right. definitely bipedal so hominids. That, that's that's an idea, I guess, that floats around the Sasquatch community is that he could be a an alien. An alien, yeah. Or I don't, he's an interdimensional being that just is walking through. According to Star animals. Wars, him and uh, Solo landed. Chewbacca in the is. Yeah, Chewbacca yeah. is the Bigfoot. Because um, it happened in a galaxy far, far away. Exactly. A long time ago. A long time ago. So, yeah. Um, you know what? I I kind of do believe in Bigfoot. I'm not crazy into that. I mean, that. I'm sure it existed. There's a, I guess there's a lot of. I don't believe in it now. Proof, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, I will say. Yetis, I think, are real. Some abominable snowmen? Yeah. Uh, I've seen some weird-ass pictures that I think my... Like, I guess... Famous Yeti pictures. Yeah. Um, there's this one... It was, like, 2004, 2005. These, like, snowboarders in Alberta. Mm-hmm. Um, like, pro snowboarders. They went out on a helicopter and, like, were getting just, like, dropped... Yeah. ...in the mount, Like, in the middle of the mountains. That's like so gnarly. Yeah. Um, and they took a picture from, like... Um, one side of this like giant kind of like valley, like inside the uh, this like formation mountains. Mm-hmm. Was this before uh, Photoshop, iPhones, all that? Well, it's not like I, it doesn't seem like it's. A, I'll show you the picture. Um, I'll keep describing it. Basically, from one on the other side of the mountain, on just like walk, you see someone walking up the mountain. That's sus. from like four hundred yards away. Yeah, which is like a little black person. <laughs> little black silhouette. Not, not like not not not, not how we don't see race on this podcast. A little silhouette, yeah. It's a silhouette walking up the fucking black mountain. fur, black Please. fur, yeah. Um, <laughs> let me try and find it. But, but yes. basically, yeah, that that's a a weird one. Also, the Sherpas in the Himalayas hmm. also like swear by it. So actually, they're kind of nonchalant about. It. They're like, yeah, we just see we just see fucking These trolls up here. So what yeah, do you think that's pretty much? Do you think that's like prehistoric DNA that's followed through, or do you think that's the in between? I'm like actually going to say yes. Seed? I will say because the alligator, the crocodile, the crocodile hasn't really changed that much evolutionary wise in like a million years. I don't. That's pretty much the perfect weapon. They're for basically dinosaurs. Though, yeah, right? yeah. They were around when the dinosaurs were there. Well, they were bigger dinosaurs, too. But yeah, they were much bigger, and they were mostly they were mostly on land. But um, this is the picture. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Very I, found, I found the Bigfoot picture. You guys can see it. That guy's Sorry, a little dead it. air. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a guy walking up the side of a mountain. Um, if you look up, it's pretty specific. God damn. Yeti seen hiking in Canadian mountains. That should be good enough, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, pretty, uh, it's not it's a crazy photo, because, but it's you know, definitely weird. I mean, without the zoomed in um, part, bears look at do it. not just walk like on their bipedal. No, like I mean, they do I, sometimes. They'll sometimes, just stand but not up. often. Not like for long amounts. Of time. Not, and definitely not to go uphill. Like, cause see, that's this true. is the actual picture. Um, that we were <clears> looking at a zoomed in version, but that's it's like it's not really Photoshop. It's just a speck on the on it. But when you zoom you in, it looks it, weird. Like, yes, of something. It's not like the Mars face. 
It's just no, really that's bullshit. That's bullshit. The Mars yeah, face so there's, thing. there's like some people that truly believe that that thing um, <clears throat> is part of that alien species. They believe that the alien species like mated with younger. Or maybe they did DNA mixing and shit. Well, Bo- like, the government told it. Bob Lazar. Okay, so Bob Lazar, long story short, is just a scientist. I say long story short, but it's never long or short. But he's just a scientist. Well, you can't go. Uh, what did I say? What did you Doesn't say? matter. Look, yeah, Bob Lazar was a scientist at Los Alamos Lab in New Mexico. He was recruited by the U.S. government to go work at Area 51, Site S4. Yeah. Site S4. 4. That was redundant. Site 4. Uh, it's in the site of a mountain. As he said, kind of mm. race to which mountain kind of thing. Um, it was really close to Area 51, on, if you too. You didn't understand yeah, n- that. Basically, Area 51, where they study the spaceships of aliens, spacecrafts that have crashed. This dude what? got hired over there. Pretty much. At Site 4, because Area 51 has a very uh, feasible use. That's where the SR 71 Blackbird was made. So, you oh, know. They actually yes. build, like, yeah, they actually build crazy there, fun yeah. stuff there. However, at S4 is where they had the goddamn S4 hangar bays. Like oh, nine different UFOs. Of course, they're not going to keep all that shit at Area 51. Yeah, they're not going to keep where it everyone there. Knows yeah, exactly. it. Like, that's why they keep it inside of a mountain. That's where there was that big it's fucking fiasco like a year and a half ago or two years ago. Storm Area 51! Oh, they yeah. can't get us all! Did anything even yeah. happen with we that? Yeah, no, they just had a late. giant party. It was okay. actually kind of cool. They're going to do a yearly thing until COVID happened. Look, it already what? happened on Indiana yeah. Jones. And then we're doing it like, what, six, ten years later? Who knows? Yeah, Crystal Skull, baby. Should have done it way earlier. But Bob Lazar, uh, he worked on, he just worked for the gravity propulsion systems, trying to figure out, try to back engineer it uh, with his partner, Barry. And basically the government told him, it, he rec- he totally concedes that it could have been disinformation. So if he told the public, mm-hmm. then they would know it came from Lazar exactly. instead of came, you know, from someone yeah. else. But they told him that the ship that he, that he was working on was not only ancient, it was from an ancient dig site that they found. So they were looking for T-Rex bones. They hit metal. And then that, holy fuck! Yeah. <laughs> this is what is this? Yo, get over here! Um, so Just they were some like... asshole in shorts, in the South American, <laughs> and like a safari desert. hat, yeah. yeah, safari hat and khaki shorts with a, ch- with a mutton chop, yeah. some British fellow. Uh, I do say, Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so it was ancient. It's got, it's got two monocles on the it. the two the ship was glasses. also from the solar system, the closest solar system, our sister solar system next to us, Alpha Zeta Reticuli. Mm-hmm. The closest solar system. So how and do they that, know that? Uh, they yeah, everyone like nuts it. over that. And then dude, finally, I don't give a shit about that part. Finally, they said that humans are the result of uh, accelerated evolution from a completely different higher species. Yeah. So they told Lazar this. They told him all this information. No, they told him the most minimal amount of information possible that he Quote needed unquote, to work the with. Most he doesn't minimal, believe it. He doesn't care. He doesn't care he about that all the time. Part. He doesn't give a shit yeah, about He doesn't the care alien. about that. He just cares about the technology he worked on, and he constantly kept saying, this should be impossible. Like how the energy was being produced with no heat. The headphones and the microphones we're using right now while using minimal amount of, like, you know, wattage are producing a little bit of heat. This thing was totally cold. If you oh, don't know what the like, gravity smoking, propulsion device is... <laughs> First off, you guys know what's that fucking beetle? The the starts with a S. Scarab beetle. Scarab beetle. Oh, scarab beetle. Do you guys know that that is also equivalent to anti gravity propulsion? That the scarab beetle supposedly flies because the way that its uh, geometrical shape is, and also what it's made of, it just flies and floats. Look it up. I'll they say up. that that's like the key to learning out or learning <laughs> this uh, gravity propulsion device. People have also, like, just taken the leaves of a scarab and made them float on their own. Well, Lazar said that they were... The only thing that they knew for sure how to do was to turn it on. And they had a fuel source, which was Element 115, Unun Pentium. Black Ops, Nazi Zombies. Yeah, exactly. That is from... Well, they they looked at Lazar's story. Thank you, Black Ops. I don't know if you guys put that in there so that we would look into this. No, they they literally did. That's why the moon base, the Nazi connection, the bells... Uh, fucking... I did so many hours worth of Easter eggs. Oh, me too, so dude. Me, me and this guy, this. me and this guy did way. The Moon Zombies was like the first one that we really did. We did Darius. We did yeah. Nakdu on Toten. Back in the day, dude. yeah, man, these are great. Middle school. Oh, it's funny. No, but too, yeah, the, uh, actually, one one five. Little like side story. Lazar has a particle accelerator in his house, pointed at this this hockey puck of one one five element one one five that he stole. And he has it pointed there in case anybody tried to off him. He still has it was that? a dead man switch. Yeah, so in case anybody tries to get at him, he'll just press a button, the particle accelerator turns on, and there goes the house. 
It blows everything up. Blows everything up. Soak up the fucking like Doctor Manhattan style, exactly. just incinerates So like, how everything. would he know? How How's that use fucking one possible? Because uh, the uh, the they only hired him because the guy previously they got desperate and uh, it's a it's a hemisphere like this metal sphere that they put in the middle of the craft to turn it on and then they pour on and pentium inside. Is that why nothing? Is that why no one's fucked with Bob Lazar because he could just blow up? Like yeah, well that's why no one went. But well, people Bob were breaking Lazar's into his crazy, house, okay. and so that's why he had to that's have some Knapp sort of. Saying, yeah, George Knapp was saying that's that, why people um, he had to have a dead man in, switch. Break in, leave fucking doors open, leave like, like, just, leave, like, like all his, his house. cabinets open and just like, his clothes on the floor and just yeah. fucking with him, just yeah assholes. Bob but, Lazar is crazy. Just so you know, before he got hired, he had a jet engine that he, he put okay, he, on his own car. They hired him yeah. because he put a jet oh, yeah, engine right, on a Honda. Right. He made yeah, a hydrogen-powered Corvette. He gave George uh, Jeremy Corbell a ray gun. He literally put a freaking diode inside of a little Disney He's a pew pew gun. He's a, super He's a literal genius. But they deleted his... Uh, records they deleted his social security he's, number but he's in the phone books he's yeah he's still in old phone books he's still in the old newspaper which is what george knapp had so, to okay, show okay, the government look, guys they did this to him after he revealed all this yes. stuff about UFOs. so stuff they uh, they only we gotta slow it down let's we slow, gotta it slow it down, down. Yeah, you're, right, you're right you're right we're yelling at each other we're getting into lazar's story screaming about Bob Lazar. all right, all right. not just even real quick frank take turn we got to frank turns. You're freaking this awesome man you just gave the whole everybody here at remedial a lot of information but, oh, but I'm a lot of remedial English. We need to give these Bada guys bang. some <laughs> some context. You're right. Where we're at here. Getting too deep into the weeds. Not too deep. You guys should go even deeper. Where and we can go deeper. Well, okay. uh, like the pop particle accelerator thing. Um, well, I wasn't really aware of that. That's, that's how they gnarly. found an unpentium. An unpentium. So. He it's on Lazar, the periodic table now. It's right? now it's on. But Lazar had said that there was an element, element one one five, back in eighty five. Eighty five. And people literally called him a liar to his face. They were like spitting at him. They were just horrible things online as well. And then in two thousand thirteen in the Hadron Collider, they were just shooting particles at each other at barely below the speed of light. And they created that's how they found the Higgs boson particle. But then they created yeah. they found other uh, shit. I was going to tell you something like about Element that. 115. So they um, confirmed his story that he already knew about 30 years ago. At the collider? Yeah. There was a guy they, who they arrested. He broke in, and he tried to, like, shut it all down. He said he was in the future. Yes. Appar- um, but I think that was a prank. Yeah, it was probably definitely a prank. But, but a, um, it was freaky the, at the time because no one knew what the fuck was going on. Oh, and right so when sketchy. they had the Higgs boson. Yeah. And it's like, this guy's like, what year is it? And he's like, <laughs> I have to stop it. I got to stop it <laughs> all. it. Yeah, Skynet. <laughs> Scream about Skynet. They're coming. <laughs> we imagine, created them. imagine if that was real, though. Skynet. Or, I mean, no. The no fucking, he broke well, in. You know what? It could dude, be. Skynet it, will be can't... real. Let's not get into that no, yet. No, no, no. Skynet like, can't can't be oh, real. I can't talk he, about artificial intelligence. Right right now. I'll get into it. Actually, Elon. I, um, he literally tweeted. Uh, basically, I don't know why we're talking you about know, he's this. He's been tweeting is uh, by Doge. By Doge, Doge, yeah. Well, and I concur. We'll, we'll get into Doge and cryptocurrency later. But uh, he, he basically said, I just finished playing Cyberpunk. I think I got to rethink a few things. He said that? Yeah, because um, you know how... I didn't in, know he like, played video games like that. Oh, yeah, he was posting a lot about it, actually. But um, the, uh, you can you basically use a sort of Neuralink device to like hack into computers, hack into like surveillance systems, hack into other people's implants and fuck with them. Literally just drop them dead. Oh, in Cyberpunk? In Cyberpunk, yeah. And it's a, I, that's how I use... I just use that to stealth around unless I have to shoot. But it's, yeah. I, I got it so powerful, I can just do that to people. He so realized, you're basically living in the future. I am living in the future in my you're mind, in baby. I was born in the wrong now. generation <laughs> way too early. Um, so Elon... Like, I need to be in the future where I can just have a massive robot dong. <laughs> you know, I chose so that slider character robot. all the way to the right. But uh, um, how's that work in that game? Oh, it's there's only three options. There's little dick, medium, normal size dick, giant dick, giant robo so cyber dick. Giant big. dick. <laughs> no, it's fine. It, it's never erect. Although you do have sex in the game. What? How's that work? I know how does that. Uh, work? It was just some. Um, it was freaky. Just two 3D models getting freaky with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, so in the game, and the game's like super buggy because like didn't the the director or one of the directors of the game, she was like, stop having sex with Keanu Reeves. Because <laughs> people were modding the game and putting, like, Keanu Reeves... He's a uh, hunk. Oh. He's got a robot arm, They too. put his character model his on, character like, one of the His character fucks, like, twice in the story alone. <laughs> That's Keanu for you. Yeah. Keanu oh, fucks. He's a punk rock star. In, That's like, a good, uh, good episode title. What is it? Keanu, Keanu fucks. fucks. Keanu does fuck. Whoa. Keanu does fuck. 
Wait, he's, he's like a he's like a punk dude. Yeah, like, he, yeah. he he has a band Pretty called cool. like the Samurais or some shit like that. And um, like fucker in blue jeans or some some weird yeah. punk rock name. <laughs> <laughs> blue jeans. Pretty much, and, but it's in like the year twenty thirty something. <laughs> Backward at blue. Actually, jeans I can't tell you anything about Keanu Reeves because it's actually a spoiler. Yeah, don't tell me shit. I'm trying to play the game. Yeah, it's fine. I still haven't watched WandaVision. Back to the aliens. Are we going back to the aliens? Should we go back to the aliens? Oh, yeah. Have cool. you seen WandaVision? No. <laughs> then don't talk about WandaVision. Have you seen yeah, yeah, Captain? Seen, Win- uh, uh, have you seen Falcon and Winter Soldier? I watched the GSP Fuck fight the Falcon scene. Falcon and Winter Soldier. The only thing that's saving that goddamn show. Is fucking what's Zemo? his name? Bucky. Bucky's the only guy I like in that show. Spoiler alert: Zemo's in it. I know that he's in the trailer. Spoiler alert: yeah. Everybody sucks except for fucking Bucky, man. I kind of like him. Okay. GSP is pretty cool. French guy. I know he's cool outside French of Canadian? this show, but huh? Is he French Canadian? Show. Yeah, he's French Canadian. It's a he's the thing. only French Canadian I've ever I've cared ever to liked. like. Oh, hey, heard that French Arthur? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, my buddy Arthur is French Canadian. Fuck you, Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, Arthur. Yeah, Fuck I'm sorry you. too. It was a little harsh. No, but that's okay. Ah, sorry, well, ah. anyway, we only give we give credence <laughs> real quick to back to the alien thing because we went a little crazy off topic. Yeah. We only give credence to this because uh, of the crazy amount of evidence that has been coming forth from the Pentagon confirming. I don't know if I most give of this. this whoa, credence, whoa, whoa. Though. You just well, that's what we, makes well, it. I, that's I what like makes okay. it. Listen well, the, to what I have to say here. You just <laughs> said we only give credence because of the Pentagon. Yeah, which is goofy. Now, yeah, I will say, fuck the Pentagon. I agree, but it's my pre- least favorite previous- shape. <laughs> it's all fuck about the, the Pen- octagon, fuck Pentagon, baby. Jeff Field can't melt Pentagons. Yeah. Make it a triangle. Oh, that's, that's right. <laughs> It's all, about, it's all about hexagons. Just make it a fucking triangle, assholes. <laughs> make it a pyramid. Oh my god. We already saw them flying in 19. Speaking of pyramids, uh, today released, George, Jeremy Corbell was on the Australian uh, USA Today. Oh yeah, the Australia flying today. So basically, the Defense Department that. confirms leaked video of unidentified aerial phenomenons, UAPs, that's the new term for UFOs because UFOs have bad connotations, is real. And see, basically, it's just a video. Slow down. <laughs> you were talking so Whoa, fast. Oh, buddy. <laughs> over the USS Russell <laughs> as I pull out my notes real quick actually <laughs> over the USS Russell yeah. so, so Russell's a ship yes the most recent footage <laughs> uh, that the Pentagon has just released and confirmed uh-huh. was uh, shows a pyramid UFO over the USS Russell in a sort of uh, it's I'm not sure what kind of camera is being used but it looks almost like a one of the like on a submarine when you're looking up. I don't. Oh. Think, it's like a shitty camera. Basically. It's a shitty IR. So no, yeah, actually, it it's a like night you vision. Have an AC one thirty. It's like a night. Like aiming <laughs> the IR. The IR Call of Duty. No, it's it's like a shitty video of the. Not infrared, but it's night vision. They and normally don't have them in night vision. It's you get the little like white. Cross yeah, it's, hair it's usually in IR mode. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know but, what I'm talking about. <laughs> look. Basically, there's this pyramid <laughs> UFO flying over the USS Russell, and it gets pretty close. And it's weird because... I'm sorry I interrupted you. Right? No, you're, to- you're totally fine. You're totally fine. I love totally you. fine. I love uh, you too, man. Um, this cheer is very creaky. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> it's Open just, your notes. Open I am, your I'm looking into the notes because this is it gets deep. But what's significant about this is that it's just another demonstration, and it's just... Sh- like I said, it's just a demonstration of what is happening and what has been happening since World War II. After World War II, because there's been sightings, of course, but there are far and few between. Far and few between. After the two atomic bombs dropped and we were testing the nukes, that's when they really started to have an uptick that we noticed in sightings because they were constantly flying over warships, they were constantly outmaneuvering jets, and they were constantly flying over bases. There are literal cases... George Knapp talked about this. You can go literally read anything that he ever mm-hmm. talked about. That some UFOs or balls of light would appear over some bases that had nukes ready to go, but that the public should not have known that there were nukes. So these balls of light just fly over. They kind of just float there for like hours so that they're on a red alert. There's, they scramble jets. They're all looking at it. Red and then alert. it flies away. They check the <laughs> nukes. There's if we were at war, there's not a single way that they would have got a single one of those nukes ready and operational. All of them were co- like some of the codes were changed. Some of them were just completely deactivated. So they had to take apart to the wiring. They had to take apart these bombs to see what was wrong. There's nothing wrong. 
but they are completely deactivated. So they're fucking with us. So, so the question is, okay, is this outer space? Is this Russia? Is so this 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 is this is a big thing. Aliens? The Pentagon didn't care. Like Roswell, they were like, look, if pretty much almost an exact quote, some fuck said, as long as it doesn't have a Russian or Chinese flag, it doesn't matter. That's pretty short sighted. So that that oh, goes pretty that dumb, goes. My God, look, the UFOs, they're back. All right, they're back in the py- in pyramid shapes. Actually, let me, see. Let me get into my yeah. notes. Yeah. So notes. about the shape, so that's like for like aerodynamics, right? Yeah. What's crazy about these uh, craft is that uh, you actually asked, is it from is it from space? Are they interdimensional? Are they from the water? It's kind of weird if you think about the submerged object theory specifically because oh, um, USO. Yeah, if you think about it, I was just I made this realization today. Yeah, they could come from space, but it's kind of far, planet to planet, you know, solar system, to solar system, unless you have this anti gravitational field. Uh, if it's interdimensional, that's crazy, but we really we wouldn't be able to even comprehend that, so it doesn't matter. But if it's submerged, think about this: seventy per, seventy more than that, because global warming is increasing the water. Uh, more than seventy percent, seventy five percent of the entire Earth is covered in water. We we really think that we're the dominant species on this planet. We have no idea. We, we explored more of space than we have of our own oceans. There could be underground caves. You, you're thinking there's like a episode one Gungan village? Gung, a Gungan village. Jar Jar Binks is all underwater. Misa back! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm talking a whole Jar Jar Binks, humanoid, aqua, Oh, lizard man people. Kinda. Yeah, it's probably A lot of people believe people. in lizard people. But it, like, you really think the UFOs are coming here to talk to us? Dolphins are far smarter than us, man. Come on. Come on. Yeah, but all dolphins yeah. want to do is just, you know, smile and diffuse Smoke uh, the, the Zazu fish. They get, it has a narcotic effect, so they go and, like, rape and smoke the Zazu Dolphins fish. do? Yeah, what? dolphins. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, get, they like to trip balls. Explain this again. Hold on. Wait, so there's, there's this puffer fish yes. that they find. Yeah. They'll fuck with it, and then they'll, like, inhale it. I think they kill it, and then they inhale whatever is inside blood, of it. And there's, there's a carcinogenic effect. And it, they start tripping. It's pretty crazy, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they have hierarchies and society. They also talk to each other. They're very smart. Yeah, they're. Uh, yeah, okay. They have telepathy, right? You guys ever body surf? Well, they talk with to those like guys? with like echoes. Yeah. You ever body surf with a dolphin? No. no, with a dolphin, no. 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 Either? No. Have you? Dude, yeah, dude. Oh wow. shit! Like, How'd so that go? many times, it's so sick. They'll like do little flips in the wave, just show off to you. Or like just I don't know, haul ass right below you, and you're just like surfing on the wave. It's pretty sick. I feel like they try to connect, you know, connect with humans a lot. Hmm. And they'll protect you from sharks too. There's been plenty of times where they'll like save people mm-hmm. and they're being attacked. And- they're very lucid. It's very weird. Like how you're saying they're showing up. They have ego. Like yeah, it's very they, weird. They get jealous. They, I'll be dropping in on a wave. Like I've been on a surfboard on a wave, and a dolphin cuts in front of me, does a little kickflip on the wave lands and like kind Fucker. of like like turns and almost like looks back at me and then like keeps cruising under the wave does a few more jumps not any more flips but then dips out it's like oh he's showing me what's up that's actually an aspect in ufos the trickster element that you always hear about think about it george knapp said this it's like throwing a cell phone into a chimpanzee enclosure it that's a simulated reality first off is mm-hmm. a zoo think about that and where we are it yeah just be a much bigger one throwing a cell phone to a chimpanzee they're going to try and figure it out. Like, sure, have at it. But if it does figure it out, great. But if it doesn't, no big deal. Same thing with the UFOs that were left here in these ancient digs. If we did find a way to back engineer, cool. Uh, if not, it doesn't really matter. Then I guess nothing ever happened. That's kind of why it's kind of weird that after World War II, there was an uptick. That's Which is why I'm saying there's nine of them. Uh, Bob Lazar said that there's nine UFOs. And one of them had an American flag on it. Mm-hmm. And at one point, his uh, partner, uh, Barry, told him to come out. We're going to test the one we've been working on. Fucking Barry. Fucking Barry, man. He's, he was there for a while, too. And there was a commander radioing someone inside the UFO. As the UFO lifts off, it literally just lifts off, completely dead silent. Actually, there was a small whirring sound, and then it gets lower, lower, and lower until it's completely dead silent. Bob Lazar explained that it works with a gravity field generator that comes from the middle hemisphere. It makes a heart shape. So if you're direct, if you're standing directly under it, it's totally invisible. But when you're standing to the sides of it, you can see just the flat disc. If you're standing above it, you can see the whole 
the whole thing, but it's just you think totally maybe is totally a different flipped. like shape than a disc, and it's only a disc because of the heart shape. He, no, he, he can draw it from memory. That's the Corvette model, is what it's called. It's uh, it's made for beings about three to four feet tall, and there's three seats in the middle with the ball. Dude, that's some strange Star the, Wars shit. The like invisible from one area, and then you could see it's totally clear. Yeah, no, it's Two it is feet. very weird. This was all in the 80s. It's 2021 now. Lazar himself was able to get some production going and find and finding out small ways to back engineer this this craft. He said that they were already proficient in operating it. A, a human. Uh, what, he, what he assumes is a human. What I assume well, is a human. Well, he used to test fly him. To like, test right fly him. Yeah. So he literally he took... He used to take like his family and friends He used to take to his watch. friends... That's what I was getting into. He used oh, to take... Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, he used to take his friends and families to go see them... Just because he didn't want to feel like he was crazy, he was working on these things. So he's like, hey, fuck mm-hmm. it. He used to literally, well, guys, he, he used to take an RV out time. there. An RV. What? Just camp out there. Yeah. And he used to just wait. And then specific time, specific date, you would just see the UFO. They would see. He has it on recording. You can find this, but it's just a light flying in the air. So it looks stupid from the 80s, too. But he has this big, giant camcorder. And you can see this UFO flying around Papoose Lake. Mm-hmm. All around Area 51, just zipping, zipping and zopping, flipping <laughs> and flopping, insane stuff. And the way he describes the the ship, when it starts, it turns on its side long ways, so it goes flat, like how yeah. you see. He, he says they don't fly like a traditional. Yeah, they don't fly like traditionally. Saucer. Like they fly, they, fl- they kind of go up, sideways. belly up. Yeah, belly up. Like if it was a car on four wheels, you would see the undercarriage of the car, and then it would go forward. Mm-hmm fucking freaky it, like a it, coin rolling yeah be like a, a cable, coin basically. rolling well, you Lazar, said it's like you know did we figure out how to back engineer it cool if not well, cool well like if we did and all these signs are happening then that might be us right exactly that's what that's the final thing i want to get to remember did we talk about this last episode with um dr manhattan and yeah, we how did. yeah the one world government yeah. they all they created in the original comics they they made the alien a giant alien. A giant alien. An alien yeah, so this alien North invasion Korea. comes and unites all of Earth yeah. for the one world government. So what I think personally, maybe let's Liz- get it's yeah, let's let's finish up with your Yeah, what final I with what I think. All, those. all of this matters, or maybe it doesn't matter. What we have to know is that the US government for sure has something. Whether they know it or not. Uh, again, Lazar also described it as like uh, a motorcycle in the Wild West. They wouldn't know what it is or like what or how to make one, but they know how to drive it. Just with with the keys left in, so they know mm-hmm. how to drive the UFO. That was in the '80s. At this point, almost 40 years later, there's absolutely no way that they haven't figured out far more. It's like Timmy's so, everyday thing. He gets up. Oh, I'm just gonna fly the UFO. Today. No, exactly. So it, humans are flying the UFOs. So all we need to do now is create a couple more, just exactly the way that it is, or maybe simulate it with drones. What about one one five? How are we gonna get that? Yeah, that's not created naturally on Earth. That was found with the crafts. So then, what are we doing right now? Are we just like searching for it? We have a limited amount. <laughs> so yeah, we. I think we can make it by colliding hate like uh, particles again, but in total minuscule amounts basically what i'm trying to get at is when the invasion does come and it will come it's going to be not aliens not interdimensional it's going to be human whether or not it's to scare us into the one world government or if it's just to go after our enemies quote unquote of the american empire lazar said that's deep yeah lazar said you know maybe he he passed a window one time and he saw scientists perhaps either looking at what would be a body double so maybe they could make a double of what would fit in the craft like perfectly fit but he said he saw a three foot like hum- kind of humanoid but similar to what Whitley Stryber saw in communion or what uh, Travis Walton saw tan beige colored dome head big black eyes like so the I have something to add to this so like but only three feet tall if we go back to spirituality here and we go back to like the other world whatever that world is that we're talking about when it comes to miracles in the catholic church and whatnot uh there's people that think that aliens and ai 
the whole reason we're creating these beings and even synthesizing like yeah. those beings is so that beings from another dimension can possess these beings and then be on this ethereal plane with us. Hmm. I like that. It's that's actually kind of interesting because what we physically are right now, you've heard we are the universe experiencing it ourselves. But if you really think about that, we don't really know what consciousness is, what it really is, but we know what our physical fleshy beings are. Mm -hmm. We don't really need these, especially if, if you've ever had a, a dimethyltryptamine trip, as uh, as I have personally I was witnessed. Bring that up too. I yeah, will say in my in my experience, I saw my I was a hardline atheist too. I saw myself from above me at least like nine or f ten feet above me and i moved my left hand because i was still very conscious very lucid but i was not in my point of view anymore i was like above me and i moved my arm and i could see myself moving and my i was totally relaxed it's how i felt consciously but i couldn't feel any features anymore i could just control like a like a puppet with strings it was very weird probably very similar but lost track of what i was saying Drugs make you help you think that aliens are maybe are good. possessing guys. That's that, right. That's right. Well, what are fighting yes. America for the American Republic. guys? It's the, yeah. we're just fleshy beings, and we don't know what consciousness is. But what if we don't even need these these you know meat suits? We're trying to Elon's trying to download our consciousness into the computer, digitize us. See, that's what's scary is like, so, what's your moral compass and what is consciousness? Okay, how do you download consciousness? It's not just data. Like, what if it... It kind of is just data. And then, can you be possessed? That's another question. Like, It is a question. Hmm. Can you be possessed? What I depends mean, on what... I guess it depends on your... Well, uh, you just what consciousness is. like, psychedelics. Okay. Dimethyltryptamine, right? Yes, DMT. Flying. You say you're flying outside of your body. It wasn't really flying. These, it was, like, floating? Floating yeah. outside of your body due to psychedelics. There. Right? Yeah. So then, like, you know, is there another place? And do these psychedelics take you to that place? And are there other beings on in that place? Maybe wherever it you didn't. Are? It didn't feel like another place. It felt like the same plane of existence, but I was just not in my meat suit anymore. It, it's kind of like you know you're sitting in the same spot. You know exactly where you're at. Like yeah, what you're. Doing. I know where I was. You know physically. that you're tripping, but you just you're in fifty other dimensions at once. And you're seeing everything flash in seconds. At least that's yeah. the times it's I've done so it. much information that it, you can't contain it all. It's like literally every second you're going through a new kind of wormhole. You're seeing different beings. You're seeing shapes, Maybe? Uh, patterns, and galaxies. The trips were pretty consistent. Well, actually, the bad trip really did feel like that. It felt like I was like falling through Alice's rabbit hole of yeah. just misery. <laughs> Which is weird because. Uh, you're like the only person who's had like a negative DMT well, trip like that. It was negative um, in the way that it was painful and that it hurt and it was very scary. Like the, the nerve receptors in my body were just firing, like be scared, be scared. But it was so dramatic that I literally calmed down and I was like, oh, this is just a reaction that's happening. I'm okay. And I, I was just going, I was having the bad trip visually. It was the most vivid of all of them. I was just sitting there with Freddie Mercury yelling at me because I was trying to listen to Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody while tripping. And... um I took me through. I, I, at one point, I was on a stage, and he was yelling at me with the audience laughing at me very quickly. And then it See, moved so, to this okay. we, like it was just <laughs> discrediting this. You know, a lot of these things that you're talking about, they seem like pretty outlandish, wild, and crazy things. So then, like being outside of your body, that vivid thing, obviously that thing stuck with you. Do you think that's because you thought it was the most real thing? Or yeah, that that was the most real thing to me because every other trip felt like a, I was oh, I'm doing drugs. Everything <laughs> felt like drugs, but that was the most real thing I've ever felt. When you, you really blast off on DMT like that, it's you're not just hallucinating; you're seeing yeah different things, and it's not it's more than a dream. It's, more than a dream i don't it's fucked up it's terrifying but like exhilarating at the same time i don't know if it, if the mind yeah. is experiencing any more than dmt on <laughs> I would like more to than a me. Bee Gees, baby but I, I would <laughs> i'm not sure if the mind was experiencing any more than 
the universe it created in itself, the own perceptions it gave itself. I don't know if, if it was just that, but I do know that seeing myself outside of myself was something I cannot explain. So I had a very, very similar experience, I would say, but uh, dimethyl triple to me is not what I was under the influence of, but um, definitely felt the perception where you're like third person view. And I, I've even like seen multiple versions of myself. And again, it's like whether you're creating this reality well, yourself or nega not is Caleb. the question. What'd you say? Nega Caleb. And like the negative version? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, there definitely it was. Took, it took me a there second was a bad read. guy there. I don't know if it what was with my name um, or this, that thing. Again, like. Caleb spelled backwards. You know, who knows if this was just my own perception? <laughs> Belak. <laughs> the lie. The lie. It's just you and like <laughs> inverted colors completely. <laughs> Pretty completely much black. <laughs> oh my god. This but, fucking uh, chair. I'm the sorry. The question is like okay, so that that dude, you know, we had a pretty long conversation and a lot of the words that were coming out of that mouth did not feel like they were coming out of my own brain. Mm-hmm. So is my brain creating this situation or is this situation here already and whatever Gosh. I am under the influence of is allowing me to see this? You, you talked about clarity. You said, like, you see, you see. I've heard a lot of people say you see when you're on psychedelics. And, like, you know, also, I work in OB at a surf shop. I see the people who think they're seeing clarity who <laughs> come mm-hmm. in there. No, you're seeing things you're on right. DMT. Those you're dudes right. are oh, yeah. fucked off. It's okay. not It's not like shrooms we're or anything. We're not talking though. about we're fucked off. Okay, we're, we're talking about things we truly believe. Uh, uh. But, like, they truly believe that, too. So That's true. You know, it's almost, it's crazy. It's like you believe that shit so, so much. And it sometimes feels like other people in this earth have a completely different perception of life in general and are just not on the same page. And it's like, all right, dude, like, is there something else? Is it just aliens? Is there something else involved there? Is there like a spiritual platform somewhere? I, as much as I try and run away from the alien phenomena or the, at least the UFO phenomena or the UAP phenomena, as it's uh, now called, I can't that. escape that yeah, there actually aliens. does seem to be a sort of spiritual thing or at the very least a consciousness sort of element. That's even what NIDS, uh, Robert Bigelow, the billionaire trying to mm-hmm. look for aliens, it, NIDS was trying to find three things. What the hell is going on at Skinwalker Ranch? Uh, the UFO, what is the UFO phenomenon and what happens to humans after death? Why? Well, because they thought consciousness was a huge part of most of the phenomenon that was going on with UAPs and even things at Skinwalker Ranch and even other places. But specifically, like, it's a really weird. I have to think about it a little bit more. But like, how do you, how how were they moving the UFO? There was no way for them to. There was no controls. There was just three seats and a ball. Use the Reverse engineer it. Well, how are they? By the way, you said you you try and run away from all this alien shit. You actively pursue it, so don't don't give me that bullshit. No, because you love it. I do. It love falls it. deep in the aliens. That's oh, the problem, though, is I want to believe. So I I got to be really weary about what what I'm like researching. Yeah. So it's a it's a battle. I'd say we all want to believe. If I mean, if there's people out there who just really actively want to shut everything down and like not. You yeah, that still persists. Those That's why this is boring ass still... people. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If you're listening, which you're probably not. <laughs> yeah, it's probably know. not. It's like be a little creative, you know? Exactly. Not to say that we're cornerstones <laughs> you know, of creativity. Yeah. We're not some artists. I am. You know, I am. I will claim that. That's yes. okay. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I'll Kayla agree is. with that. Sponsored by... Uh... Oh, yeah. Um, The podcast, I guess, I guess we're kind of toning it down. What do you guys... How are you guys feeling? I guess it depends. Are we are we uh, done talking about the UFOs? Perhaps. Maybe we'll save more for later. Get into other uh, hypotheses. I guess hypotheses. So. I'm pretty fucking tired. Yeah, uh, next time we'll get yeah, into the... Uh, Good night, you guys. Thank you for listening. This has been... We love you guys. Remedial English, episode six. Uh, but we do have and... a sponsor. Um... Sorry, wait. Well, do, you, do you want to do, do we need uh, a send off and then say, the sponsor after? Little send off. I still love Riley, even though it sounded like I don't want him to talk at all earlier. 
That's okay. And uh, by the way, I'm sponsoring our podcast. There you go. That's right. That's our new sponsor, Caleb's uh, clothing company slash just lifestyle brand. I, I suppose. I don't know what would you call it. Your it's your I thing. Mean, personally, I skateboard, and the goal in the which is to develop apparel that is useful in the craft, like the skate pants. Skate pants. Get ready for them. You should see his skate pants. I mean, he created a pair of pants for skating. There's yeah. a lot of stuff out there that's similar to it, but it's okay. I'm going to do it a little better and not make it look like freaking skating Where can jeans. we find it? Uh, you'll find it in my brain right now and in my bedroom, but hopefully soon you'll find duplicates of what I have. Big, big stuff going on. on big stuff internet. going on. But, uh, What's it called? With the brand? It's called Death Dance Apparel. Death Dance Apparel. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Making shit that if you're going to dance with death, you can at least like slide on style. your ass, so, you know, and not rip your pants the first time. You can <laughs> keep going out and trying to dance with death with the same pants multiple times. Like what's that? Uh, what's that expression? If you're, if you walk on ice, you might as well dance. That's a, that's a great line. Ten. <laughs> we dance? <laughs> well, everybody, I guess that's a. I guess that's it for this week. Well, this cacophony of a podcast has been remedial English, and we thank you for getting you say this. Cacophony. Cacophony. Stephanie. Of a Is podcast. that how you say it? Cacophony. 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 Yeah. Fuck it, I like that cacophony. Cock Episode cock. title Cacophony. <laughs> write that one down <laughs> um yeah thanks everybody we'll Thank see you for getting uh, this far for an hour next in. week i'm francisco frank caleb. i'm riley oh, caleb. Sorry. caleb with the death dance good luck you okay over there noel i think we bored noel to sleep we did bore noel, noel to sleep. he got too deep hit him well you oh, you engineer. I, I, sign off you okay <laughs> say your name and then get us out of here Sign off. Mm-hmm.